Good evening, everybody, or uh, hello, good morning, if you're watching from America, but I think most people are joining from Europe or from Asia. Um, welcome to another Zen and Zazen class. As always, let's sit together for 30 minutes first, then I will read some quotes of Kodo Sawaki, talk a little bit about that, and after that, if there's something you would like to Share or ask, you're welcome to do so.
Thank you very much for joining. This week I want to talk again about Kodo Sawaki's quotes from To You. Um, last time we reached almost the end of page 15. Today I want to talk or start with the last very short quote on page 15. A monk in layman's clothes refers to a layman who has left group stupidity behind. Uh, probably I need to explain this expression a monk in layman's clothes a little bit. Um, usually monks are dressed in monks robes and layman's lay people who are not ordained they dress like lay people um, but then there's this expression um, for people that are lay persons they are not ordained monks and they live in normal secular life but inside they're just like monks so that's meant here a monk somebody who's inside in his spirit is like a monk, somebody who has have left home, but he dresses like a lay person, he lives in the city, he has a regular job, maybe a family. And then there's also the opposite, which is a lay person in monk's clothes. So that's somebody who's shaving his head, is dressing like a monk, but inside he's like a lay person. So I don't know about other countries, but in Japan, that's probably the case for many of the monks. They don't become monks or priests out of their own decision, but they have to inherit their father's temple. So for them, it's just a job that they have to take. And they dress up as monks to do ceremonies. But at the end of the day, when all the ceremonies are finished, um, they undress again and Usually they do, do not do any meditation, they don't study the Dharma, because inside they're just like laypersons. Um, but today in this quote it's about the opposite. So maybe it's true for many of you who attend right now the Zoom meeting. Um, you are not ordained monks, but you want to practice meditation, you want to study Dharma because there's something inside you that is although you're not ordained you're maybe monks or nuns in layman's clothes and that means Sawaki says that means a person who has left group stupidity behind you're not controlled by group stupidity st stupidity anymore you don't play the game anymore you have quit the game or you play the game with different rules it's not about winning or losing so much anymore it's about how can I have more fun playing the game and how can I help the others have more fun. If you play the game in that way, in a new way, then even though you're not formally ordained as a monk or a nun, inside you are a home leaver. <laughs> Sawaki Roshi, you Zomolashi,他说的是一个和尚,他穿上了凡人的衣服,指的是这些凡人,他离开了集体,就我们之前提到一个词哈,那个叫,呃,叫什么,集体,集体愚昧,就是一个凡人,他穿一个和尚穿
，虽然在日本特别常见，就是他把当和尚当成一种工作，就是嗯，比如说呃，在日本有一些寺庙是继承式的，就是你的父亲可能是和尚，然后呢，这个这个庙就是他的孩子会继承这个庙，他从小从寺院里长大。呃，他好像对当和尚没有什么追求，他从小就是在这个环境下长大的。他把当和尚当成一个工作，他可能比如有一些仪式的时候，像和尚的一些，比如葬礼啊，就是就这些和尚的工作的时候，他可能穿上衣服去参加这些仪式。但是葬礼结束之后呢，仪式结束以后，他又换下了普通人的衣服，就和普通人没什么区别。所以就是有一些人，他可能虽然是和尚，但是他其实没有在修炼，没有在修行。他没有在学习，然后也没有在读一些圣贤，他只是把它当成工作。其实那个老师泽木老师，他也是想从另外一个角度说的，就是虽然你穿上了这个衣服，但是你不一定是个和尚啊、嗯。但同样的，我们虽然在现在这个社会当中，你没有穿到和尚的衣服，像我们现在这些人，今天来参加这个会的同学，虽然我们没有穿和尚的衣服，虽然我们都不是和尚。但是我们来上课，就是你可能内心有这个追求，你是希望呃可以有有这些修行和学习的，呃，你像我们每一天，呃，比如每天你都在工作，或者是这个和尚其实也是他穿上这个和尚的衣服，可能开始了另外一个游戏。其实我们学习或者是坐禅，是希望从游戏当中退出来，呃，或者是或者是这些和尚，比如你怎么做这个游戏，你可能。从这个游戏当中退不出来，你穿着那些衣服，但是你怎么来做这个游戏？你是以一个一个新的方式来来学习、来玩这个游戏，也是一种修行。就是，嗯、呃，今天这一条其实大概其实这个意思哈。Okay, the next、uh, quote is the last quote in chapter two. It's a little bit longer.、Uh, let's read it first. Buddhism is a religion. That reduces the congestion of blood in the head. Ordinary people are always getting excited, and their blood is always rushing to their heads. Whether they stuff themselves or have an empty stomach, whether they see a woman or a man, they are always getting excited. And their blood is always rushing all around. Buddhism reduces this congestion. Buddhism means your blood circulates in a natural way. So it's funny that、uh, Sawaki Roshi defines Buddhism here in a very, I think, well, untypical way. Usually, when people talk about Buddhism, some people say. It's not a religion in the first place. Some people say it's、um, a religion that leads us to nirvana.、Um, whatever. Here he uses this very physical approach. He says the point of、uh, Buddhism is to redirect the blood flow that's always going to our heads and make it more natural. So he could also say. Uh, Buddhism lowers kind of the center of gravity. Usually, we live our lives centered here, but Buddhism helps us to lower the center of gravity.、Um, I think that's quite interesting because、um, usually, when we talk about religion or philosophy, we don't do it in this physical way. Um, but that also shows that in Buddhism, especially in Zen, the mind and the body are connected, and that's also a connection between Zen and Yoga.、Um, if you want to change your mind, you have to start with the body, and working with the body also means to work with the mind. The two are connected, but often, especially now in modern times. We try to solve problems only with the mind, and forget that actually changing the blood flow actually means to change also our life and our outlook on the world. Okay, so much、uh, from my side for today.、Uh, maybe after Schwanzan's translation, 
If you have questions or anything that you would like to share, uh, please feel welcome to do so. 刘老师讲的特别好，就是我读的时候我没有这么深的理解，我觉得老师一一说完我就特别明白。然后我先给大家简单翻译一下，就大概是说什么意思，书上的大概内容哈。就是这个泽木老师呢，他给佛下了一个定义，他说佛的宗教呢，指的是让大家的头脑。中的血液不要堵塞，减少就是大脑血液的堵塞。呃，普通人呢，我们总是特别的兴奋，让你的血液总是冲昏你的头脑哈。然后，呃，他我们是把自己，把我们总是堵塞住自己，或者是呃，虽然有一个空的，他写的是胃哈，其实是身体，我是这么理解，是身体的意思啊。呃，那个，但是比如说，我们看到一个男人或者是女人，我们总是特别兴奋，或者是让总是急于让你的血液就是呃冲冲出来，让你的血液流动特别快。嗯，而佛教呢，或者是我们说修行佛，呃，就是那个佛，它其实是让我们减少这种堵塞或者过剩的这种兴奋的血液。让让我们的血液自然的流通，嗯，然后老师说，其实一般的人对佛下定义，就是说，比如说佛是为了涅槃哈，是为了让你能够从循循回当中解脱出来。一般人对佛的定义是这样的，但是德木老师他的定义就是一种很很不常见、很不常规的一个定义。他说的是让大家。让其实让大家的血液自然流通，让你不那么兴奋，其实是佛佛的定义。然后他说，老师说，其实我们一般就是人生活当中总是用头脑，以头脑为中心生活，你总是想去解决一个一个问题，你总是用头头脑用思维，其实你忘了你是以身体为中心来活在这个世界上，应该以身体为中心。就是不要用头脑，应该想到你的身体是做出来的，不是想出来的。然后我们总是呃，像瑜伽跟坐禅，其实禅修都是有相通的哈。我们都是通过改变大脑，然后呃，改变大脑是从改变身体开始的。你像像我们体式练习哈，从掌握体式开始，然后改变你的意识，改变你的行为，改变你的生活习惯，你是从开始体式练习之后才有了这些改变的。你不是想改变而改变，你是开始练习之后有改变的，就是我家的啊。然后，所以那个老师说，我们我们总是想通过用你的大脑来改变，其实是不不应该不是这样的，应该是从我们的身体血液循环，从整个身体为中心开始来改变。然后这个是刚才老师讲的，我觉得说的特别好。Thank you, uh, Hasim and uh, Joseph raised their hands. Uh, Hasim, first, uh, please. Hi, Moho. Hi, everyone. I have two questions, but I think they are very related. Regarding the last passage you read about the blood circulation within the brain, is it related with the uh, Taoist or yogic? Uh, origin of Zen, like since the Japanese Zen derived from the Chinese Chan and it derived from the Indian Buddhism. So, can we say that it is related with Indian uh, yogic tradition and the Chinese Taoist Qigong tradition? Some are there relation within the Orthodox Zen? And my second question. Are there any differences between Chinese silent illumination and Japanese shik shikantaza? Mm. About the relation between Zen and Taoism or Qigong, really, I don't know so much about that. Maybe if Schwanzan knows anything about that and also the connection to yoga, uh, she can later say something uh, about uh, that. Silent illumination. Mm, like a uh, hundred years before Dogen went to China from Japan, there was this split or well, the split between Rinza and Soto is much earlier, but there was this confrontation between silent illumination 
And uh, the proponent of that was Wan Shi. He lived about 100 years before Dogen. And then there were uh, the Rinzai people who did focusing on um, koans. And also, I can't tell you so much about possible differences between what Dogen then brought to Japan. But he respected Wan Shi and his silent illumination Zen a lot. He also wrote a chapter of the Shobogenzo, it's called The Needle of Zazen, or in Japanese, Japanese it's Zazen Shin, in which he quotes uh, Wan Shi a lot and tries to, how do you say, develop what uh, Wan Shi said in a poem a little bit further by writing his own poem. Um, but really, I, I don't know too I don't know enough about a Chinese style silent illumination Zen to give a really good expert answer to your question. Um, but if Xuanzan knows more about the connections of Zen, Chinese, Qigong or Taoism and Yoga, maybe after Joseph asks his question, um, she can tell us if she knows. Joseph, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joseph, do um, you have a question? Yeah, yes. I, I guess my question is kind of, if that one was about the uh, the history or that idea of the blood going to the brain and so on, mine is kind of about now the future of it or the modern side, which is that, um, you know, you said you don't usually think of Buddhism in very physical terms like that. But of course, there has been, you know, this whole sort of explosion of interest in Buddhism in the West, and in particular in recent decades, attempts to kind of like scienceify it, you know, by doing like studies or like brain scans on people who've done a lot of meditation um, and the development of, you know, mindfulness based therapy, secular mindfulness movement, and so on and stuff like that. And yeah, I guess my question is sort of a bit broad, but it was just like, um in general what do you think of the the attempts to put buddhism or buddhist traditions into a western scientific understanding of like cognitive science and psychology and so on do you think that's a, like a, a positive thing or do you think there are dangers to it or things that can be lost in that attempt to translate um i'm sorry that's a bit of a broad or general question mm -hmm. i don't see any dangers but, oh, also, I mean, I'm not quite sure. I'm not like, for example, if you study a monkey and you become an expert on, on how monkeys behave and how the monkey's brain works, still that won't make you a monkey. And kind of the Zen idea is that you become the monkey. So even if you knew what happens in the brain of somebody who meditates for 10, 20, 30 years, it's more about doing it yourself. And then you will see how it feels from the, the first person perspective. And if people like to do that kind of research from the third person's perspective, like I don't meditate, but I want to see what ha happens in a meditator's brain. Okay, th that's fine with me. I don't see a danger there, but I don't or I don't feel that it also helps a lot. Um, so, yeah, I would say mm, let people who want to do that research do it. But I don't think it's necessary, but I don't think it's harmful either either. Schwanzan is raising her hand. Yeah, I want to uh, about Joseph's question. Actually, it's the same in, in yoga, too. Uh, it's very hard to explain sometimes. Mm. A lot of people study yoga in a different way. Uh, like they're trying to know with every muscle and how how your inner organs work when you practice yoga or something. Um, yeah, I think it depends different people. Some people like to know about that. Maybe they they think 
they know more about the muscle and how to control it, they they practice better. Some people they think oh, even I don't know about all those muscles on your body or which part I'm practicing. The yoga still works. The main thing is you have to really practice whatever you know you didn't know. You really have to put work on your daily practice. Uh, a lot of people, actually a lot of students even, they, they like to ask me very detailed questions like, like how why I do this asana, where I should use, which muscle, and how I, I, I work. Sometimes it's really difficult to, un to answer those questions because a lot of the time as you practice, your body knows, mm -hmm. even you don't understand why it works. Your body just no, your body can solve the, the problem as you practice. Then normally the new students have more questions. The people they practice longer year, they don't have questions mm -hmm. because as they practice, as they practice, your body understand it. Your body understand it better than your mind. Mm. Uh, sometimes you think more, and you, you the people it's very interesting. Sometimes the student they ask more questions. It looks like they are very into yoga, like they are very interested in yoga. They are studying hard, but most of the time, the people they ask more questions, they give up uh, very soon. <laughs> the the student they don't really ask questions. They just do the practice. Mm. They stand on the mat every day. They do how to say like the, their duty. Mm. They do. They need. They really need to do, and then they they, they get better. Mm. And they they continue, they don't they do longer practice. Their yoga happens, um, the yoga happens more. Mm. I can see more yoga on those students than the people. The student they think more, more questions, more questions. As mm. I, I feel today's Dalaki Roshi's question uh, reading is really helpful mm. for practice yoga too. Most of the time, we, we think too much. Um, um, more, um, I feel more yoga happen like in wise, like like Western people. I think they like to study more. <laughs> right? Yeah, like they they. But for Indian Indian style yoga or chi China culture, mm -hmm. we don't really how to say we don't really uh, study more about those. Um, questions we i think also the culture maybe is one of the part mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um about jesus he, he asked about the qigong stuff actually we i i learned tai chi before at school we have my master semester one year uh three times a week tai chi class um, I studied in a dance school before I graduated from dance school. So uh, we have Tai Chi and mm -hmm. the sword also the class in school. Mm -hmm. um, the teacher is from Wu Tai Shan. It's a Dao. Wu Dao Shan is a Dao. Has very long hair. Mm -hmm. um, but he he said it is it's about breathing, about the Qi, how you use you feel the Qi inside your body also around you like you can see when we started you you go like this like like this and you push one part another part that's how you push the chi you feel the chi inside your body also outside around you mm, i'm not a master i just know a little bit but i think it's also about you can't really think what you're doing when you're doing tai chi because it's very difficult to remember the movement um when you start to thinking you forget where you where you are because it's very similar all those just are very similar you when you start to thinking what i'm doing and then you you lose the feeling um when you're doing tai chi or i think chinese kung fu mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's my experience chris have a question Oh, Chris has to raise a hand because I, I had a comment. It just, anyway, the previous questions are so interesting. 
I, I, I just want to say, like, I analyze, I've looked at CT scans of my spine. I have a problem in my back and stuff. And like, I've tried to use my scientific mind to solve his other problems and stuff. And then today, I think, I feel like the, that helps a little bit, but like Muho said, I think it it's not gonna solve the Zazen problem. The only thing that works is just to surrender and to try to let go, I feel like, and that doesn't need an understanding of the problems in my body physically. But I just wanted to say the first part reminded me when I lived in China, like there were people that dressed up like monks and you know china's a developing country and like you and there's a lot of crazy things go on sometimes and some people dress up like monks and and beg for money just to get money and they're probably mm -hmm. you know they probably very poor people that need help and and that some and so like i actually uh, my kung fu teacher near the the lama temple in beijing one time introduced friends to a monk and they didn't believe he was really a llama <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, first, the first part just reminded me of that that it seemed the opposite sometimes you have people dressing up like monks and they're not <laughs> i see marek is also raising his hand marek please okay i'm unmuted now i believe no we can hear you it's okay uh good good evening uh i have two questions first uh of all i've uh, uh saw a, um, a report about a week ago or maybe a little bit more from tokyo by bbc it was quite uh worrying about the uh, very bad weather coming to japan it mm -hmm. was forecasted uh, like a hundred kilometers per hour in Tokyo in the city, the, the very heavy storms. I know you are quite uh, quite. There is a, a few hours by train from the from from Tokyo, but so the first question is how have you been and whether it's everything is fine um, uh, in your place. And the the other question is related to the quote that you that you read read about. Uh, uh, the, the 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 Kodo Sawaki was it this this uh, the the, ho the homeless teacher that that didn't have the the um, his his temple was it uh, was it a choice of his that he didn't want to have this um, get involved in in this institutional aspect this uh, because what I sense from this quote is. Um, some sort of criticism uh, toward this institutional games we play when we are in a in a group. So, uh, do is is my intuition correct that it was his his uh, um, criticism toward uh, toward what's going on in an institutional? Yes, I think so. Yes, yes, and. If 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 that's correct, this institution. So uh, the 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 last thing that uh, came to my mind was your your own uh, story because uh, um, you, you shared with us that you uh, uh, quit um, the, the the temple the the, the two weeks uh, ago that I attended. You make the remarks that you don't have any. And more the uh, about on your on your business cards uh, that you are now um, kind of uh, I don't know if you can call your well, you have a different status more I think more um, similar to this to the to, to the layperson at at least when you compare to your your years of being an abbot so maybe if you like to share. Uh, uh, with us some thoughts of your what what influenced your decision to uh, to go this this uh, uh, did you want to to be a more private person uh, and uh, farther from the, the this institutional 
dimension of, of Zen too. So maybe the, 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 those quotes and your story, maybe they are related. And if you'd like to share with us something that I would appreciate it. Mm, yeah, well, two years ago, I retired as the abbot of the monastery. Um, I had been the abbot for 18 years. And before that, I would trained there as a monk for eight years. So more than half of my life. And it felt, well, like a good time to, to, to give over the responsibility to a student. Also, when you have a, a family with kids, it's kind of a difficult environment to live there. Um, in the winter, it's impossible to go to school from there. So I always had to live uh, three months separate from my family. So after all this time, I wanted also to make it easier not only for myself, but also for myself and also for my family and well, start something new. Um, like uh, maybe, you know, the 10 ox herding pictures that uh, exist in Zen, somebody who's looking for his ox and then he finds the ox and he grabs the ox, tames the ox, rides on the ox. And then at some point the ox has disappeared. The man is alone again and there's an empty circle but then there's some flowers blooming and at the end the person returns to the town to have contact with the people um, so in a way you could say what i'm doing now is also an attempt to return back from the mountain back into the town um, and what I'm doing here on Zoom or on YouTube in a way is also a part of that. Uh, it's not the same as the monastery. I think we also need monasteries for people who really want to dedicate a decade of their life or so to train as monks in a monk's environment. But uh, I think what I do now is it's a completely different thing, but maybe it's also valuable. I hope it's valuable for some people. So how about the storms? Are you, is, there, is everybody okay over there? I think so. I didn't hear anything about storms in, in, in Japan. Uh, well, Schwan-san is in Tokyo, but she says she's okay. Chris says they're okay. Okay, mm. okay thank you, everybody. It's five past nine here in Japan. If you don't have any urgent questions, I would say Let's finish for today and meet again next Monday. Usually I do Zazen live on YouTube on Sundays, but next Sunday, is, um, Sunday I'm going to be in Tokyo. So there's no YouTube live Zazen, but this class on next Monday can take place. So let's see each other if you want. Same time, same Zoom room, uh, again hosted by Schwan-san. Thank you for hosting us. Yeah, and everybody, thank you for coming. Have a nice week and see you again.